Okay, let's take a look at this question together. So, uh, we see that the conclusion is that the tax revenue will go up and the reason is that the gas tax is going to go up. So which of these must be true for that to make sense? So does it have to be true that the annual budget requirements for the public transportation system will not increase? Um, it doesn't have to be. Um, if it increased just a little bit, like one penny the next year, this could still be true. So it doesn't have to be true that it doesn't increase. So we can get rid of that guy. And I didn't like these. The number of regular gas buyers in Illinois will increase. I don't know why this has to be true. He's just going to increase the taxes. That should make the money. Um, the percentage of the Illinois traffic that comes from long distance trips as opposed to short commutes um, will not change. That could change. I think those proportions could be different. Um, the number of commuters who use public transportation will not decline. Um, they could stay the same. They still make more money. Um, but a significant number of drivers will not switch to using public transportation to minimize their gas purchases. So significant numbers will not. This must be true, I think, because if a significant numbers of them did switch to using public transportation to minimize their gas purchases, and if it's significant, then it, has, it makes a difference. Um, then I don't think they're going to, uh, this has to be true, that a significant number uh, won't. So I'm going to go with E, hopefully we're correct. Yeah, we were, we were correct there. So, uh, very good. Those are assumption questions and you'll have a few more uh, for your uh, homework to work on as well. And you'll be reviewing them uh, in your reviews. So let's take a look at um, the next type of question that we're going to see here, the weaken questions. Um, and on weekend questions, we're going to go through the same three-step process, right? We're going to, uh, one, we're going to ID the question, two, we're going to break down the paragraph, and three, we're going to test the answers, but it's going to be different than on assumption questions. So how do we ID weekend questions? Well, they almost always have the language following if true plus some negative language, often the word weekend, but also other words. Not every situation following it's true, but almost every situation following if true um, plus weaken and negative language. Um, and like assumption questions, weaken questions um, contain a conclusion, assumption, and premise, and we're going to apply that same process. So again, we're already um, reaping the rewards of what we learned on assumptions, on weaken questions. Um, and the way we test the answer choices on weakened questions is we actually sort of pretend that that answer choice is a premise and we ask ourselves whether we just made the argument worse, better, or nothing. Um, and a lot of the wrong answers will just do nothing to the argument. Obviously, if they strengthen the argument, they're not going to weaken it. And possibly one answer choice weakens it more, uh, depending on how the, answer, the, the, the question is worded and what it's looking for. <clears throat> So um, we ask ourselves, if this answer choice was an additional premise, would our argument be worse? Um, and that's how we answer, uh, test the answers on weakened questions. So identify them with following of true plus negative language. Um, look for conclusions, assumptions, and premise. And again, new, new test question. If I made this an additional premise, uh, would the argument be worse? Um, let's not hold off any further and let's take a look um, at a... Uh, uh, at a uh, weakened question. So let's work this one together. Which of the following, if true, most weakens the advertisement, uh, advertisement's argument? So following, if true, plus weaken. We know we have a weakened question here um, on our hands, and we know that we're going to need a conclusion, assumption, and premise, and we're a GMAT robot, so we're rocking it. Um, advertisement for bad. Go ahead and read this real quickly. Think of the conclusion and the premise. Okay, so we see the word so, that's sort of like therefore. Uh, I think we have the conclusion here. So for the most effective bad breath treatment, choose Eliminex. So for most effective um, equals Eliminex. Okay, and the reason is that what five out of six dentists treat their patients with Eliminex. So the question is saying, which of the following if it was true would weaken the advertisement's argument that it's the most effective. So, again we see this word some, 
It's a wishy-washy word. Some bad breath treatments will also help whiten teeth. So if we added this, we took this down here and we added it to this list of premises, that five out of six treat them, and also some bad breath treatments also help whiten teeth. Does that make Eliminex less effective as a bad breath treatment? I hope not, and it doesn't. So um, we can eliminate um, A. How about B? Dentists often choose products based on cost and ease of use. So if this was true, if we took this and added it as a premise, so we said five out of six dentists, they treat their patients with this, but also dentists often choose products based on cost and ease of use. Therefore, Eliminex is the most effective. I'm like, wait a second. You just said they use it because of cost and ease of use, but Eliminex is the most effective. It seems like maybe they're just using it for that reason. So this looks like a pretty likely candidate. Let's hold on to it. How about Eliminex is available over the counter and five out of six doctors use it to treat people, therefore it's the most effective. I'd be like, okay, this point doesn't make it any worse. So I think we can get rid of that. So if D was a premise, if D was a premise, some dentists will not prescribe Eliminex to patients who may be irritated by its key. So some and may, this is a pretty wishy-washy answer choice and I'm trying to weaken this thing. Um, I don't think this is, does a lot of weakening. And how about E? Studies have shown that Eliminex is a much more effective treatment for bad breath than many comparable products. So if I added E to my list of, uh, so two points folks. Five out of six doctors treat their patients with Eliminex, um, and studies show that it's much more effective. If anything, um, E strengthens the argument, I think, and so uh, let's definitely get rid of that. Let's go with D. Check if we're right. Nice. Great. So let's try another question, uh, another weekend question. This one's a little bit longer, but it's okay. Um, we can see the following if true. Uh, we see most seriously weakens. Um, so we know we have a weakened question on our hands, always the same three steps, ID, paragraph, answer choices. Um, so let's go ahead and take a moment to read this paragraph and identify the conclusion and the premise. Okay, so this news commentator is disagreeing with our police commissioner, okay? And his conclusion is that um, the warehouse district needs cameras because um, there are not residents or public phones and uh, so um, and there's the biggest risk of crime. So a warehouse district equals uh, still needs cams. And the reason is that there are um, no residents, no f public phones, um, and biggest risk of crime. So we're trying to uh, weaken this argument of the news commentator, essentially support the police commissioner, kind of. So. A. It costs over $5 million annually for the city to pay policemen to monitor video cameras. So if this was true, if we added A to our list of premises here, right, if we said let's add A, um, so it costs over $5 million and the risk of crime and the phones, hmm. This seems to kind of weaken it, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not sure, so I'm just going to leave it. How about B? Warehouses have automatic motion detecting video cameras which send an alarm to the police department. So if I added B to this list here, so hey, warehouses have automatic motion detecting video cameras. There's no residents, there's no public phones, and there's a greater risk of crime. But also warehouses have automatic motion detecting video cameras which send an alarm to the police department. So. I don't think we need cams. I kind of like this one a little bit more. I'm going to hold on to it. How about C? Due to most video cameras' limited scope and quality, the police will receive less information from video cameras than from phone calls. Um, this 
you know, it doesn't support it a lot, but it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of saying that, um, um, actually, no, it doesn't, because if the video camera, it's not supporting having video cameras because they're not useful, um, but there's not going to be people there, so it just doesn't seem to bear on this uh, question, I don't think. Uh, and then D, the police department is much nearer to residential areas than to the warehouse areas. So this would essentially increase the need for cameras. So I think if anything, this would strengthen it, um, but it certainly wouldn't weaken it. So I'm just get rid of that. And then E, an average of one in five public phones does not work. Um, not sure what that has to do with it. It's sort of those FYI answers. So we have A and B and let's compare them. So if it's true that it costs over five million dollars for the city to pay policemen to monitor video cameras, does that weaken the need for warehouse district video cameras? I don't know if it has anything to do with it. Let's take a look at B. Warehouses have automatic motion detecting video cameras which send an alarm. Does that weaken a need to still have video cameras? Really specifically it does. It says you can just do this. Um, we don't need cameras. Um, so I'm pretty sure B is the answer here. Let's uh, let's check that out. Nice. I think we got that one too. So one more weekend question. Uh, go ahead and try this on your own, and I'll show you the answer in just a moment. So I think D is the answer um, because most of the people interested in online trading services would not have sought the services of traditional advisors, then this argument doesn't make sense because these people were never going to make that money anyways, so it won't increase their economic hard times. And we're correct. Nice work. So we're gonna